Now you said you guys you guys have had like numerous things throughout this whole time where you guys have been doing all these albums and writing all these songs. Where you you guys were on Bill Peters show, you said mm-hmm. a few times uh, over the years. We go way back with him, of course, because my mom uh, went way back with Bill. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bill's Bill's the nicest guy. Oh, he's uh, awesome. Even when we put out our last album, he he shot me a message. He's like, "Send me that new song so I can play it." Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Level Up Cleveland. And this week we have a couple of the guys in here from Lower 13. What's up? Metal band from <laughs> Cleveland, yeah. What's up, guys? How's it going? Doing good. good. Thanks for coming down. Thanks for having us. Let me introduce you guys real quick. The two Now, there's a three-piece band. It's, right. a, it's a power trio. Two of you guys came up. We got uh, Eric Kruger here, drummer. Awesome drummer. Thank you. <laughs> and Patrick Capretta. He's yep. guitar and vocals. Yep. And Get not right. here is Sean Balog. Yes. Yep. Sean Balog. And he is bass and vocals. And we were just discussing this. This is a, you know, like we've had bands on here who have dual vocalists, but usually one guy has a role and the other guy has the other role. And so they back and forth or they'll do their thing. You guys are really, they're not set up that way. You guys have literally two singers that can do both roles and it just comes down to, I don't know. What does it come down to? How do you guys decide who, who does what? Uh, it's it's almost like whoever came up with the idea gets to sing it. Or, oh, you so know, who writes it, thing, basically, type thing? Pretty much, because it's, like it's the way I envisioned how I sing it. So, and do, do, do you ever write something and think he would do better at what you wrote than you, or vice versa? Or? Oh, we, yeah, we'd say that all the time to yeah. each other. I'm like, oh, man, you wrote that riff way better than I thought of it. Like, he, like he'll take something and twist it around a little better. So, yeah. Cool, cool. Now, you guys... Been around for a little while. I mean, 2006, you guys formed. Mm-hmm. So, yep. so you got you got seven years under your belt right now, which is a long time for any band. I mean, it's a, it's a lot. and you guys are are a very active band. So, oh, you guys yeah. already have four full length albums out. You're working on an EP now that your guys will be releasing soon. Mm-hmm. Yes. You don't. I mean, I mean, for any band, especially a local band, four LPs in seven years is a lot in, in this day and age. You know, you're putting out, you're pumping it out. Trying to, <laughs> trying our best. And yeah. this is the same three guys from the start. Have you have you had all the way through the same three dudes? Yep. Yes. What's the secret to that? How do you think that? I mean, one more thing I want to mention is you guys are also Parma guys, and we've 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 accentuated the fact that Parma does produce a lot of heavy metal, and it has for decades. It's like you know, it goes way back to the Mystic days, and I mean, a lot of the guys came from Parma. A lot of the Mushroomhead dudes are from, from Parma, and Parma's a huge, huge place that's produced a lot of. Musicians, not sure why. Me neither. Yeah, but but it, <laughs> but it does. I mean, Parma's really they ha- they have through the years always. Yeah. Now, going back to the first album, Rabid, mm-hmm. right? You guys just formed. Actually, you guys have been were together for a while before you put that album out, right? Because that came out in like ten. Yes. So we so we formed in the eighth grade, and then we oh. we recorded that first album our senior year of high school. No kidding. Yes. So you wrote all these songs. So it took, so it took a little while to, to get all these songs right and get them together. And then how does that all work out at this? So you guys decide what? You're going to go to a recording studio? Is that what you did your first time? Or did you know somebody? Or how did you record that first album? Sure. So uh, so we actually did our first three-song demo in 2008, which oh. would have been our sophomore year. And uh, we knew... Sophomore year of high school. Yes. Oh. And uh, we actually recorded that at Mercenary Studios with, with Jason Vanek. Uh, we knew the Vanicks because because uh, our bass player Sean uh, took guitar lessons with Sean Vanick, and uh, I think my mom might have even have known them as well through the Grapevine of musicians in town. So we recorded with Vanick, Jason. Vanick Midnight and yes, his band Vanick. He's also oh yeah, oh, yeah just many so- many other projects throughout the years. Eternal Legacy, yeah. Uh, but but uh, but yeah, so we recorded the first demo with them, and then we ended up going back to do our first record with Jason at the same studio. Mm-hmm. Cool man, cool. So. You guys have been now the th- the one thing I want I've I've just been listening to you guys all week, and it's heavy metal, 
But one thing about you guys that stands out, in my opinion, that I really loved is your attention to melody. So, like, you guys have this thing where you can put melodies, and I mean, like, some really cool melodies that you would never think, and you, you fit them over this super heavy stuff that's going on, right? I mean, like, you guys are obviously, you pay attention to the fact that you know you put in these melodies. These are, you guys are a very melodic band. Yeah. But not to the point where you would think you lose the edge. I think that was the coolest part about this band. You kept your edge, but you, 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 these melodies were coming through always. Like, they're all over the place, too, yeah. you know? Thank you. We always push ourselves to make something stand out. Like, yeah. Well, you're the guitar like the player. message, yeah. You're a guitar player. So yeah. this is, this is, this uh, leans on you a lot, I would imagine. I mean, like, you're, you're definitely the melody maker here in a way, right? Sometimes I think of the melodies like the chorus in my head before I even come up with the guitar riff underneath it. And we just go, I write in reverse sometimes. It's weird. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'll write, like, I'll think of like a phrase in my head and I'll just, it gets stuck in my head and then I think of a way to sing it and then I find a melody underneath it. We just go from there. Sean's like, we got to do a harmony. So, <laughs> is that how you guys write though? Do you, do you usually show up with something and then it's built from there? Or what? What about now? Sean does he does he bring stuff to the table also? Is he part of the writing process too? Oh yeah. So so is it? What about you now? Do you ever bring like an idea to the table, or are you always do you, do you, do you get your own ideas too? I have yeah. So sometimes I'll come up with a with a drum beat that Sean will then make a riff to here and there. Um, so as, you guys don't have a set way of writing songs, right? It could mm -hmm. be anybody at any time. It's just whenever something strikes, mm -hmm. and then everybody knows to pile on at that point. It's like, all right, let's write, let's finish this thing. Yeah. Pretty much, I will say Sean is the structure guy, though. So like, oh, yeah. like everyone comes up with ideas here and there, but he's the guy that puts it all together. The it arrangements gets like the, and mm -hmm. stuff yes. like that. It's like here, here's some riffs, and he's like, all right, I'll put them together, and we'll see what I come up with, and then we all discuss how it should sound and. Yeah. So you guys have roles, and you know what they are in this band, and that's probably part of your success, right? I mean, like, you guys know what you're what you know what you're good at in the band. You know what you're good at in the band. He knows, and then so therefore, no one's yeah, we all stepping have a on job. each other. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> we do. <laughs> yeah, and and so that that's definitely part of the reason why it's successful. It works, mm -hmm. right? Would you agree? I mean, that's that's that has to. You got to have that kind of thing, right? Definitely, yeah. We've always talked in the past. If we don't like something, to speak up and don't just let it it keep going and going and then the song doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, right. It's like, say something and we'll work on it. If we don't like it, we don't like it. If not, we'll stash it for later and jump back to it some other time. Yeah, and, and I'm imagining also that you guys are the type of band also that you don't, you know, like, uh, four albums is a lot and these are like nine, ten songs per, per LP type thing. So you got like 50 some songs already probably written and, and done, you know, finished. So you guys really don't have time. Like, you're not the type of band really that you're going to write a song and your buddies tell you how great it is, and so you listen to it 100 times and you want to just that. You guys are already writing the next one, right? Like, you guys are already like, like, like no, okay, that's done. Next. We're, yeah, we're going in next week for the CP, and uh, we're already writing the next one. So. <laughs> so so now that's another thing I wanted to ask you. You said you were working with Noah Buchanan at Mercenary, but you now you're on Pure Steel. Yes. Are you still going to record at Mercenary? Or now that you're on Pure Steel, will you be recording? We recorded even the last album, so that was recorded at Mercenary, uh, but came out on Pure Steel. So, so, we'll so they're just releasing it. They're distributing it for you and everything like that, but the mm -hmm. recording is done at Mercenary. Yes. Right. All of them have been that way so far. Yep. Correct. No kidding. Mm -hmm. That's cool, man. Noah, what do you think about Noah from Mercenary? I mean, like, like as far as he goes, well, I'm serious because, like, we, we, we had – Chris e in here from Alathia, mm -hmm. yeah, and and Terry from Alathia, and they were telling us all about Noah, Noah, Noah. And then we've had other people in here. Ed Stevens was in here, and he was talking about how he was a magician and da da da. So we finally had to have Noah in here. We were like, we got to get this guy in here. Oh yeah, and he was everything that he was talked about. He's an like, awesome dude, mm -hmm. super knowledgeable guy. Busy as hell, that's for sure, man. And he's in some, <laughs> and he's in some amazing bands. I mean, yes. Oh yeah, I'm repping it today. So yes, it, yes, yes. yeah. Oh man, yeah. No, Noah's great. We have nothing but uh, awesome things to say about him. We won't record with anyone else. Yeah, are you at that point now? Yes. It's like that's, oh, yeah. that's your guy. Yes, his constructive criticism is what we crave. Like when yes, we go he, in there, yeah. yeah. It seems like that's what people say. You know, mm -hmm. like he he just has the knowledge, and and when you're when you're stuck somewhere, he'll t he'll get you there. You know, he he's will. Like, he'll get you out of that little pothole. Yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. guys do have an incredibly good sounding the albums are, they just sound incredible i mean seriously they re really do sound that, that's another Thank reason you. we go to him because he knows what we want to sound like and he knows how it should sound also so it just comes out 
really now that good. we now that we've done three albums with him, like he knows what we're capable of as musicians and how we work together. Oh, so he'll push not, Eric. Oh yeah, but, uh-huh. but that's what we want. We want him to, if if we're not playing up to snuff or something, we want him to come in and say you can do better mm-hmm. or you know try it like this, it'll sound better. He's a know? producer. He's producing. He's, yes, he's, 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 it's he's, his work too. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. His name's on it also, so right. it matters. And and. You got to trust him. I mean, Nun Slaughter's a, 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 a these are these are the bands that he's a part of. Also, I mean, he obviously knows what he's talking about. Oh yeah. And once you have the faith in him, and you, 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 I mean, the music he's he's recorded for you guys, it just sounds amazing. Oh yeah. Now we just record. We're like, all right, do what you do. <laughs> we'll see you later. And yeah, he's he's efficient. Uh-huh. He has a great ear. I, he knows I told what him, he's doing. I told him when he was here, I was like, dude, you're creating a Cleveland sound right now. Like, there's oh, yeah. a sound. There's, there's a number of bands now underneath your tutelage basically mm-hmm. and they're and they're, they sound like noah oh, like yeah. you know what i mean oh, it's yeah. no it's, it's no it. thing like, you know? that's that was recorded there yeah, yeah i think sure. that i think that's uh, we're in the midst of seeing that that come come about now when i first saw you guys it was at the shotgun thing that that alethea had when they put out this at uh, beachland ballroom mm-hmm. they did eight bands it was amazingly done i thought i gotta tell you i thought that was the setup super, was great. Yeah, super cool. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and and you were in the tavern, and then you'd go to the ballroom, and you just kept going back, and, back forth. and forth. Yep. And there was all all the bands were good. It wasn't like that you were seeing a, a dud in the in the group. It was great. Mm-hmm. But as soon as I walked in, you guys were playing, and I was like, "Wow, who the fuck?" <laughs> Very cool, man. Very impressive. You know, you guys you guys have a great stage presence up there. You guys were killing it. Yeah, you, you yeah, were one of the fun. first bands. You guys were one of the first bands playing that day, and you guys were killing it. Mm-hmm. I knew it was going to be a good day. We tried to bring the heat no matter we, what time we're playing. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that was such a great show. We were, we were really happy to be a part of that. Yeah. A lot of friends on that lineup. Wasn't that? I now was you guys to play forever all day. <laughs> it was that's, early. That's kind of a group you guys are like. Like One thing we've noticed in, in throughout these interviews and stuff is that there's like factions of, of musicians that kind of like hang. You know, like it's not just necessarily the band, but there's several bands, and sometimes it's just different band mates, but they hang, and there's one hang here, and there's here, right? And you, and that that shotgun bowl was kind of that, right? It was like a lot of bands that kind of hang and know each other, and totally. yeah, and mm-hmm. and so therefore that was more of almost like a, a, a festival for you guys of sorts where it was just kind of like a big fun thing you did. Now you just walk around, you literally know everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so much fun. Yeah, and you guys, now, as far as, because you guys have been together for so long, I mean, a lot of bands that, that are in your situation, you, you, you're in a band, you, you've been the same three guys for a while, you kind of get your niche, right? Mm-hmm. But then all of a sudden you want to try something different, right? You're like, you're like, yeah, you know, yeah, I've always kind of want to, you're in this faction with all these other musicians. Have you ever, you ever talked with any of those guys, like, hey, wouldn't they, you know, maybe we'll get together and, you know, like, do do something or whatever. Is that a, have you gotten to that point yet where you guys are, Thinking outside of Eric has a little bit. I mean, I have with myself. I guess just record had solo my, stuff, my own recordings. Yeah, but other than you have that, a studio at your house or something. No, yeah. I've had some like friends help me out. Oh, and stuff, oh, but oh, yeah. Oh. So you guys do go outside of it a little bit sometimes. A little yeah. bit, but we're always so focused on lower thirteen stuff that. Well, but yeah. it's but, but lower thirteen is kind of specific. I mean, it's 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 like. There's so you know, much I know your on. song. Like when your songs come out, yeah, I know. I'm like, I know this now. I got, to, I got to know these, this, these songs. It's specific. It's, it's, it's a certain music. I mean, you guys, you, you do stick to a you're killing this thing, type right? of you know, sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, know. right. Theatrical too. That's another thing. Mm-hmm. For three guys, there's sometimes all kinds of stuff going on. You know, you like to start a lot with clean guitars a lot of times and build yeah. these songs up and stuff like that. Where I'm like. And you do, that's another thing you guys do really well is this building process with some of these songs where you've learned now how to create these epic type Yeah, songs. we like that stuff, yeah. Yeah, like mm-hmm. there's some epic stuff that you guys do also. And you guys have the tools to do it with, you know? Like, obviously, you're a killer drummer, which you have to be. I mean, like, you can't be in these bands and have some subpar drummer destroys the band immediately. Right. You, they sound terrible, but, man, you you... You're a metal drummer, dude, for sure, through and throughout. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. and that matters, especially if there's only three of you. You got, you all got to shine, right? I mean, like, totally. Thanks, man. Yeah, no, we 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 try our best. Uh, even on these new songs we're working on, I'm trying my best to pick them apart right now and put the drum fills in. And you know, I'm like, 
I don't want to say stressing over it, but you know, I'm putting a lot of thought into what I'm going to lay down in the studio here shortly. You're stressing over it. Stressing well, over I mean, but that's yeah, but <laughs> then, but you, if you weren't, you you wouldn't be much of a musician, right? I mean, right. like this is like right. these wouldn't are your babies. Then. Oh these, yeah, no, these we, songs are your babies, right? I mean, oh, yeah, like, we, totally. we care about what we're making. You know, I want to go in there and make it the best that I possibly can. When I listen back to it, I want to say, oh yeah, like great fill there. <laughs> you know, I don't. I, I want to be proud of my work years down the line. You know. Sure. Yeah. No. No. You do. And, and well, every musician does. I mean, I think that's what the, the that's what this whole thing's about. Yeah. It's just not all of them are as good as you. Wow. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, once once that material is down, it's down. So that's it. So yeah. That's why how, that's why he stresses so much. Well, how are you guys with that? Like when it comes to the writing process, you know, like I, I know some people they stress so much over their music that the songs just are never fucking done. You know, like they're mm -hmm. like, well, that's Sean. Uh, I gotta, uh, <laughs> that's a little something. I still and so Sean like, just changes shit left and right. Yeah, all day, tweaking, yes. tweaking, all tweaking. Day, yeah. So at what point does somebody just say, "All right, dude, we're fucking done. It's done." We do. I, just, sometimes it's me, <laughs> but <laughs> I'll be like, I think we, I think it's good. It's good, yeah. good the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can only plan so much too. I mean, it's like you gotta just go in the studio, and certain things just happen organically when you're there too. I've, which is something I've learned. A hundred percent. Well, and not only that, but then you you learn through the recording process. You start listening to music differently. So, like, once you start recording music, now you know how that sound was made and how that thing happened, and what. And then now you're listening to it, and you're like, "Holy shit, that's that." You've heard that song a million times, but now you're hearing something different because you you understand how it's being done and stuff like that, right? Yeah. I mean, like, you listen to music differently. Yeah. You listen to how more intricate it actually is. Yeah. What got you guys into music? Like, how 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 does it start off? I mean, you guys are young. You guys, you guys just, you know, you're in your 20s still. I mean, you guys are, you guys are relatively young. You're in the what our 30s. Yeah, we just hit 30s. Um, well, I'm 31 now. Uh, Pat just hit 31 as I well. I just hit 31. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. You'll be 32 in October. Shh. I was. I, I, I didn't do good math. My math isn't very good. <laughs> hey, no worries. I, no, you guys kind of set it up for me. I right? mean, I, I could have let the 20s thing slide. But. Yeah. <laughs> but you're still young. Even in the 30s, it's still freaking young. Oh, yeah. To me, it is at least. I don't know about, you know. I'm just, but I'm I don't know to, to a 20-year-old. but <laughs> Starting to feel old, but. Are you? A little bit. <laughs> How, well, you're the drummer, though, man. Yeah. Like, that's the, that's the job that, uh, you know, that's the physical job, dude. That's mm -hmm. the, you can't, you're not allowed to get uh, old. You can't, you got to stay <laughs> Do you have a regimen or anything that you do, like, to, to, to be able to keep up with the drum stamina and all that, or just playing drums? Honestly, just playing drums. And I've, I've been finding as I'm getting older and the songs are getting harder to play, <laughs> I need to go down there and play more. <laughs> <laughs> you need <have> more practice. <laughs> yes. Oh, I got you. I got you. So I've been trying. That's If anything, I'm just trying to go down there more often and, and play the new songs more because those are the more challenging ones. So how do you start playing drums? Uh, let's see, it was it was really a fluke that I'm a drummer. Like uh, <laughs> I never really like set out to be a musician. I uh, I was watching a music video countdown with my dad back in the day when I was like like 11 or so, and I was uh, just pretending to play the drums on my lap. Uh, and he was like, "Oh, that's a really easy drum beat. Do you want to know how to do that?" And and he showed me. And really, the your rest, dad was a drummer. Uh, he was a guitar player, but he wrote so he's songs a musician. in his mm -hmm. bands. So he dabbled. He could play drums like a little bit, play bass. Now, your so, mom, this is, since we're bringing up your dad, we're going to have to bring up your mom, I guess. Mm -hmm. Your mom is Sandy Kruger. Yes. And the late Sandy Kruger. And she is one of the most well-known singers in Cleveland mm -hmm. at one time. I mean, just, I, I mean, like, the queen Yes, is that she was called by some people. Um, tell me a little bit about your mom. Sure. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Amazing singer, obviously. Yeah, uh, she, such a personality uh, in in the scene. I mean, she she was practically famous. I mean, no, she was. I would I would, I would call her famous. Yeah, especially locally. Yes, for sure, for sure. And that was and the you know, there's no ego with that. Like it's just it, it is what it is. She just had such a vibrant personality. You know that people just knew her just yeah. from from being nice and just. Yeah, she she obviously touched a lot of people. She through, did, yeah, and 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 she was a metal per. I mean, she was heavy metal. She was, yeah. She was. She flew the flag for that. I mean, mm -hmm. she was like, if you go on YouTube, you can see her singing with Midnight, totally with mm -hmm. Vanek, with Sean Vanek and them guys up there. She's out there giving it hell. I mean, she's unbelievable, amazing vocalist, mm -hmm. unbelievable power. She was always humble about it, but she she was a. Uh, Truly incredible. Mm -hmm. She got up and sing with anybody though. She was she oh, loved yeah. she just loved to do it, right? And oh people, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was her passion. 
Yeah, and you guys, you guys did some cool things afterwards. When, when after she passed, you you guys had a nice benefit. You guys did all kinds of stuff, and you had a lot to do with all that, right? I mean, you were yes, you were doing a lot of that stuff. I remember that's when I first started recognizing who you were and stuff. Was I saw your name popping up all the time, all over the place. Oh, and then when I got a hold of you, actually, I talked to you at the at the shotgun. Yep. Yeah, and then I was like, oh yeah, man, awesome, dude. Thank uh, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but, 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 I, but she was definitely. Uh, uh, around here, like a, a major, major person. No, and she was. Yeah, yeah, and she'll be missed for sure. Uh-huh. Um, but your dad was the one that started saw you tapping. Yes, and said we're gonna you, you should play the drums. Got you started taught you a little bit, and it would get you the fever a little bit. Is that what happened at that point? Pretty much, yeah. It uh, got me to the point where uh, they got me like uh, a drum set for uh, for Christmas the one year. Oh. And, uh, it was just a little little practice kit, you know, nothing huge, but, uh, ju- but just to see if I wanted to stick with it, you know, he showed me a few other beats and I just kind of kept up with it. So then they bought me my, uh, Pearl exports that I played up until 2020 or 2021. Oh, just I was recently. playing that kit. Uh-huh. Yeah. I-, I finally upgraded recently to what, to a Pearl masters, uh, maple. You stay with the pearls. Yes. You're a pearls guy, huh? I am. Pearl. Um, and the, the new the new EP. I'm gonna mm-hmm. talk about that a little bit now. So, when you guys go into writing something new, like a, a, a whole work like that, do you guys are you guys just writing like individual songs and then seeing how they all come together, or is there an idea for the whole work, the whole EP, and and each song kind of like encompasses this idea, or do you even know like? Is it just, do you just write song by song? Is that how it goes, basically? It, it all dep- depends on how depressed I am uh, <laughs> 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 and how it all turns out. What it's, kind of day Sometimes it, is. it comes out into a concept. Sometimes it just turns into other s- just stories of, of things. But this one's a little more of a concept. So. Well, it's smaller, so maybe it's easier to create. It, it a was concept. a little easier to just cram a couple together yeah what, what what kind of concept are we talking here is it is there what, what are we thinking about like what do you guys what's your what's your main themes of writing about and stuff like what what what, what do you find that you guys what well do you go to when it comes to topics of writing and stuff oh that's a good question i gotta let him take that one you never write lyrics <sighs> nope i like to i like to i like to talk about things but not make it about that thing it's more general for everybody kind of thing so i try to like you know, go between those two things. Every time I'm writing something, I'm like, it's about me, but it could be about anybody. But are you guys, do you guys lean into like the death metal type subjects or stuff like that? I mean, what would you, what would you, what would you, what do you, what's your subject matter usually about normally? Honestly. Anything? Could it be anything? Is it, is it just like that? It's it's just about life, I guess. Just it's just what we go through. Yeah. Stems from personal uh, experience and feelings. So, yeah, much. So, you, so you just pull from your own, from your own daily life and whatever happens. And it's like, Again, however depressed I get, <laughs> that's <laughs> does, when it all starts flowing Does it seem out. like that's when you write your best stuff? Oh, when, yeah. when life's down? And Sadly, and yes. Sad, yeah. and that's when it comes out of you? Mm-hmm. Do you ever just try to force write? Where you just like try to like... That's how riffs come sometimes, but other than that, like a lot of vocals and melodies come from, yeah, just kind of being down sometimes. <laughs> when it comes to like writing riffs and stuff like that, who do you think that you kind of like... Uh, have been influenced by the most is, is the riff guy. Like, like there's tons of them, but man, do, do you have a certain guy that you feel like you like, is there a guy you like, just love that fucking guy's riffs? Or well, it's definitely dime and stuff, but I figured you're gonna say dime. yeah, but other than that, I mean, there's a, there's a million people I love listening to, but it's hard to just pick one and stuff. And I, I try to just do my own thing too. Like I try to come up with stuff people don't play. Do you ever do you ever not listen to music just to try to to, to keep your own yep yeah I've uninfluenced type thing? Mm-hmm. I've secluded myself out from like listening to stuff for like an entire week before. Just just, just while you're right in, in that process and stuff to try to clear keep it a in, cleansing almost like a purge right like stay in it yeah yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah 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 yeah. Now you said you guys you guys have had like numerous things throughout this whole time where you guys have been doing all these albums and writing all the songs where you you guys were on bill peter's show you said mm-hmm. a few times uh, over the years we go way back with him of course because my mom uh, went way back with bill yeah yeah so, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, bill's bill's the nicest guy oh, he's uh, awesome. even when we put out our last album he he shot me a message he's like send me that new song so i can play it yeah uh, right 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 now do you guys t- tend to do that ever or do you release all your works as one whole work do you ever release singles 
You ever do that? You're like 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 a couple of teaser singles, at or least something? a song yeah, or two. Maybe. We usually have at least one promotional single, sometimes a second, but at least at least one before the the body work comes out. Are mm-hmm. you guys doing all that kind of stuff? Are you guys are you guys handling all your promotional stuff, and or do you have somebody help you with any of that kind of stuff? Uh, pretty much uh, our our own. Uh, everything was self released up until uh, we we got on Pure Steel. Um, and, and I do all the social media and booking and everything myself. Oh, so you take care of all that. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's your job. Yep, That's exactly. Job. Mm-hmm. Since, I mean, I am involved in the music, but of course not as much as like these guys sometimes because of, you know, they're the ones actually writing the lyrics and the riffs. I contribute where I can, but but otherwise, uh, yeah, I, I take up the other side of the sides of the band to fill in. You've been doing it since MySpace days. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, wow. I don't, I don't know why yeah. I just, I had had an early like inkling that I just wanted to do that stuff and mm-hmm. was interested in it. Yeah. So. You wanted to like book the shows and everything, get us going and stuff. Yep. Yeah. So going back to high school, that was, that was all me. No mm-hmm. kidding. So that you guys are good at that. I mean, you're good at, you're, the, the, you're, you're good at promoting yourself. I see, I see that's him constantly. Sure. It's always up, man. You always got stuff up there. Always promoting. I see you all the mm-hmm. time, man. That's good to hear that because I've, I've never really had someone tell me from the outside in um, how I'm doing at that, I guess. No, we both do. We both, awesome. say, we both see all, a lot of your posts, a lot of your stuff. Even for me, like bands that, that I like and admire, I know they're coming to town from social media, you know? That's it. I uh, Yeah, it's, it's really important. That's that's where I get all my information from. Who are some of the bands you admire? Oh, so many. <laughs> Too many to list. So you guys don't have like favorite bands though. You guys don't have like a, like this is my favorite band. I mean, I got some. I got favorite bands uh, like Gorgira and Lamb of God and The Contortionist and yeah, Incubus. Yeah, I I got a handful. I know you do. Oh yeah, for me, Trivium, Slipknot, System of a Down, Children of Bodom. Um, mm-hmm. And then we have our collective uh, influences that kind of influence the band, like our band. But uh, but uh, but yeah, tons of tons of different influences. Yeah, Sean's all over the place. Yeah, Sean's listens to like everything so so you guys just have like a because you you did the bands you named pretty widespread bands too it wasn't just all like one yeah, it wasn't like all metal yeah yeah i like to listen to a handful of stuff so and sean for sean he likes he likes chili peppers a lot uh he also likes the proggy kind of metalcore stuff like periphery and mm-hmm. um, animals you, as leaders all that yeah. kind of stuff yeah so do you guys ever see yourselves doing that kind of thing sometimes where like you know you said chili peppers he's a bass player so chili peppers do you guys ever notice that your influence is like you guys are like because you guys have some pretty cool stuff that you do in your songs where like it's like I say you'll be doing a real good crunchy straightforward metal riff. Mm-hmm. I mean it's 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 basically classic metal, you know? Yeah. But then all of a sudden you're putting these there's just some things going on, even the bass. Even his bass will get some kind of like a funky thing that he'll do in certain spots and stuff. Mm-hmm. And is that what you think that is? Is, is? is these influences from like Flea, stuff like that, where all of a sudden there's this metal tune and, you, you know, you could be just playing, you know, the root notes or just playing along with the guitar. No, he's doing some funky thing, man. It's just, it's it's cool, you know? Yeah, there's, sometimes when we figure out riffs, Sean will figure out a cool under riff to put with him and the drums so him and the drums are doing something while i'm playing something else yeah he loves putting some riffs that don't make sense together and then they just but as a three piece together. don't you kind of have to do that to fill in every th- all the all the totally the yes. voids? All yeah the time. yeah yeah if you're both playing the same thing and there's just three of you it's just sounds like it's just the same thing yeah, yeah it mm-hmm. does, you can't really it sounds like green day right totally, <laughs> totally. You know, <laughs> that's what it would be yeah, yeah you know right. one guitar band does push us in creative directions I would say that are different than uh, your traditional two guitar metal band. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there's a lot. Well, there's a lot of things you guys you guys have to figure out, like your limitations, and then figure out how to get around those limitations. That with, sucks with sometimes. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, like, but it's that's the fun of this. Like, it that's, is. That's got to be part of the whole entire like challenge of a three piece, where you know, uh, you you have an idea in your head that you want to flesh out, but you only have these three pieces to do it with Mm -hmm. so you got to get clever and creative sometimes i'm sure and stuff like that yeah there's nothing like practicing vocals over a really hard riff like (laughs) figuring out where the vocal matches in what you're doing yeah Yeah, cadence wise and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and 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 you're trying to put these crazy melodies over everything too so Mm -hmm. you know that's another whole thing do do you no, I, I listen to a lot, but I didn't listen to everything. I wasn't paying. Attention. When you guys are in the studio recording, do you sometimes will overdub guitars to to like over for a solo? So you'll have a guitar under the solos and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You do that, and then 
but you guys would never like do tracks on a live stage or nothing like that. It's no, gonna, no. So it's going to have the bass in the back. The bass is going to be back. In yeah, your... we just do it because we know it sounds good for the album. But live, yeah, we just do as much as we possibly can. So, yeah. and we try not to go too far from it, so it doesn't sound so off. That you try to keep. It doesn't things... sound like the song. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah, we yeah. just played the the heavy metal flea market. Oh, the, the flea Gold market Horn. with Destructor yes. and everything. Yes, yeah, yeah, with yeah. Destructor, another big awesome lineup full of friends in the scene. I, I drove. Such drove, a great time. I went there and drove past there and was like, "Dude, there was no parking anywhere. I couldn't find any." Yeah, go in the back. Is that what? I didn't think <laughs> there was parking back there either. Was there? There's like a random. There's a little lot back there. Lot, yeah. yeah, but that was filled there? up really fast. Yeah. We couldn't even park up front. Like we were hoping to snag we a little spot a there for the drums, and and that lot was full. Yeah, I don't yeah. think they were prepared for what what, what came there. I, when I saw the 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 list of bands, I was like, "What the fuck? How are they doing this?" <laughs> yeah, no, it's they, they've good. done it a few times good. now. Uh, mm-hmm. And my mom even went to some of the earlier ones back then. Yeah, um, that's what got us interested in going too. What do you mean now? The, the flea market? Yeah. Yeah, like how, uh, like. Uh, how long was that going? How long have they been doing that? A few years now. Um, uh, Dave Overkill has, has a, a big part uh, in setting those up for, oh. from Destructor. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, they, they did a few, I, I think, pre COVID. And then uh, they did one last fall. They had Savage Master headline and Destructor played as well. Pat and I actually went to that one as, yeah, as just really a, good. attendees, just, just for fun. That was yeah, a lot of go. fun. And, uh, yeah, great time. It's free. Just I mean, it's audience. freaking crazy, man. The beers are great. Beers are great. Mm-hmm. And just the environment is awesome. I love how big and open it is in the space that they have the show. Mm-hmm. Are the bands volunteering for that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No kidding, man. No shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, just, just for fun, really. Yeah. I that's, mean, that's what we've always done, though, like, forever. Like, we've never been worried about money and stuff like that. We for, just, as far as playing out goes? Yeah, when we go out, like... Fans don't get paid. Yeah, well, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> Come I mean, on. I mean, we try to now, I mean, but, yeah. yeah I mean, you got to try to get something, man. Yeah, you got you to gotta recoup no, totally. But, like, when it's something like that, we're like, oh, yeah, we're down. We're, we Don't even sweat it. Yeah, we're, we'll bring all our stuff, and let's do it. And what was the purpose of that whole thing? What Was was, it, was there a fundraiser that's going on there for something? Or it's is just a flea market, right? I, yeah. So is that really what it was? So did you, they just had the music for the for that in, in specifically? For this specific one, yeah, it was just, just the flea market slash uh, free show. Mm-hmm. I, it wasn't uh, for any specific cause or, or fundraiser or anything. Mm-hmm. How, how'd this last one go? It was great. It was awesome. Yeah. It, it was really cool actually being a part of the show this time. Yeah, right. Because we enjoyed it enough just going uh, as attendees, but we really liked being a part of it this time, too. How many people do you think were there this last time? Hard to say because it's such a big open Everyone's space. All is it, is over it, the how place, big is it? But is there it are a lot really of people. big? Yeah, there's really a big? huge bar eating area. And, and then yeah, there's the showroom the where the market and the band's merch is. And then there's the room where the show actually happens in. Outside patio. Yeah, there's so much stuff there. Yeah. So when you guys are playing out. Are you guys mostly right now opening, or are you guys are headlining also too, right? So you're doing both. We try yeah. to, yeah. I mean, we'll set up a random show out of nowhere sometimes for ourselves, and yeah, headline. And where's the, where's the, where's your main place that you play at, or do you have one? So that has changed a lot, so depending on the different eras of our band. So when we started, it was the Jigsaw Saloon in Parma. Yeah, that's awesome. actually the first show it's we gone. ever played with uh, my mom's cover band at the time when we were freshmen in high school. Yeah, your mom got uh, started so, technically, which so we did Jigsaw days. Yeah. All of our biggest high school era shows were in that club because that was like mm-hmm. home for us. It's like yeah, right down right the street. Uh, so yeah, I could roll my amp there. Seriously, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> and then that run ran through the gamut of owners and then got demolished a couple years ago. Unfortunately, yeah, literally. So then uh, the Hi-Fi was another that we always played and then is now the Foundry. So, yeah. uh, so and, then, that, and then the Hi-Fi and then the Breakfast Club and then... Oh, yeah, that, that went also <laughs> went through its tons of owners yeah. and name changes. But, uh, but the Foundry is another place that we've frequented over the years. We used to play the Fantasy, but now mm-hmm. that's different too. It's something else, yeah. <laughs> fantasy, man. I've seen so many great bands in the 80s and 90s in Fantasy. More recently, the Sly Fox in uh, North Homestead has been, has been one of our spots. Mm-hmm. Really yeah, but you really get like you get place. paid to Sly Fox if you as long as the, you get you guys got a cover right. You guys do yes. door covers it there. They're very generous. They're they're very great to work with. Yeah, love yeah. that club. You guys are talking about you possibly having like a CD release party for this EP that you guys got coming out of here. Mm-hmm. Yes, you guys gonna do something kind of special or is it what do you, what, what what do you do for what do you, what? I feel like being what? special is over now. What's your definition of a CD <laughs> release party? Really? It's just having fun, I guess. You just, just, just to get it out there. Getting, and getting book, our yeah, friends together. Book a headlining show at a club. Have some good friends and bands as support with us. Just play show. Have a good time. Do you guys have any idea about when you guys will be 
putting this thing out? Is, do you have a release date yet? Or Hopefully is there... within the next couple months. It shouldn't take too long, honestly. Because so. you're doing it yourselves. So you're basically, once this thing's mastered, mm-hmm. it's you guys are going to release this on just basically putting it out on Spotify and all that kind of thing. You're putting it on Pretty much. Platforms. Yep. We're, we're, gonna, we're, we're still going to have a proper uh, promotion cycle for it, probably like a six to eight week window where a single will come out and then a show will be booked with a, with a, with a date to promote that and the EP release on the streaming Mm -hmm. and the, yeah. So, but I'd say we're looking at maybe fall, August, September, October, depending on uh, when the masters come back and when we can get everything uh, into motion. Yeah. We already got got, like the artwork going and everything. So it should all just come together. Who does the artwork? We We, different people over time. So, uh, our first album was Sean's uncle. <laughs> uh, our second and our third were uh, were Dave Fastos from uh, from Solipsist. He did the uh, oh, complete really? layouts Basist. for both of those. Um, and the third one uh, we had an artist that uh, Pierce Still Records worked with do that one. And then this one we uh, we found the artist uh, through Fiverr. Uh, awesome app. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, yes. Fiverr's cool. Right? A lot I mean, of really yeah. talented people on there. Yeah, it is cool. Yeah, actually, uh, the our logo. I don't know if I have one anywhere, but I had a guy from Fiverr. Yeah, the face. Nice. Uh, I forgot okay, from yeah. Fiverr do that. I, that. That's really cool. Yeah, they're 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 that was the best thing I ever did, man. It was so easy and it was cheap and right. Oh we yeah. Talking some killer artists that are on there and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Killer artists with unique ideas, you know. Yeah. Uh, actually, our most recent shirt design too uh, came from an artist through that app. So, when you're dealing with a record label like Pure Steel, and you because you mentioned just now, you said some of that they worked with, they did our album cover the last time you said right. Mm-hmm. And are, are record labels still like they used to be where they kind of like, are they, do they just offer to help you or are they saying, no, we want you to go down this road, do this, do that. Or is it more of just like, what, 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 what does a record label in today's world do for an artist? So I can only speak basically based on our experience with Pure Steel because that's the only uh, label representation we've, we've worked with throughout our career. Mm-hmm. But uh, basically for them, it's, uh, you know, they, um, they do the pressing of the record themselves. Uh, they do the promotion of that, uh, so like all the metal blog sites and like some interviews and stuff like that, and then uh, uh, they they and for the artwork a little bit too, money towards that. But uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah, that's mostly distribution and a little bit of promotion, I would say. Mm-hmm. What what do they say to you about like hard copies of music versus just digital copies of music? So like what people, some people don't even do CDs anymore. I mean, sometimes it just goes right to digital, and that's where. Their music stays. Yeah, we still fight with that a little bit because we like the physical. Cause that's how we've always been. Sure, but and, the, and there are people that like the physical too. So we, so we always, uh, no matter what, we're, if we're going through the label or self releasing, we'll always have a physical CD copy. How, how do you guys mm-hmm. go about like numbers of that? Like how many physical copies do you, or do you just throw we one? Try in? not to buy too many. Yeah, but... that's what I'm saying. There's a cost involved in all this kind of stuff. Yeah, and if there's not an audience, bundle. then it's almost not worth doing it in some ways, right? I mean, like you right. got to determine. You don't think you can get rid of them, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I mean, like, like, d- 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 so that that is a conversation that you guys have to have sometimes, where it's like, all right, are we there yet, or like, do we do we want to? But you guys are doing LPs and stuff. Like, you guys are old school. I mean, you guys have like old souls type thing. You know, like, where you guys you guys were born in like 1970, almost. The, like the way you guys think. I wish. Well, I mean, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like, the, like, like the hard copy thing is is such a dying, dying thing. Mm-hmm. And the the LP. Yeah. That's a dying, dying thing. I mean, the single is is where it's at, and the EP, the three song EP, two song EPs, mm-hmm. that's where it's at. You guys are kind of like going against that, which I think is super cool, by the way. Yeah, ever since we, ever since we did the first album, we were like, well, we got to do a second album. I mean, we did an album, so that just turned into more and more. We're like, well, why stop what we're doing? And it just seems keep like going. It's, a, it's a patience thing. It seems like to me, it like is. like people run out of patience, not just fan uh, artists, but fans. Mm-hmm. Like they can't stand it. They got to hear hear the next new thing. So. These bands That's what gotta we fight keep, with, yeah, yeah. Because look, do, do, are, are you, aren't you ever tempted once a song's done, especially if it's one of those songs where you're like, oh, it's really good, yeah, yeah. You're like, I want people to hear this now. Yeah, that, that temptation's got to be there, right? Oh, yeah. definitely. Do you guys ever like not allow the other guy to like have a copy of that song? You're afraid he'll release it by accident. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not quite. But yeah. I will say that uh, we tend to get impatient when we get our masters back, so we're showing our, our best friends already. Yeah, they're like, gotta hear this. You know, families well, and how stuff. Good it is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we we do tend to spoil a few songs here and there for but, friends, but yeah. not not you know not release them though. What, what what song do you guys have that you think that you did that the most of and was most proud of at the end that after the change was made? Do you have one? Dude, that song Monster. 
Oh, yeah. We had a million renditions of that song. And then it finally got on the album. We're like, all right, we're done with this thing. <laughs> what, al- what album is Monster on? Restore the Order, our third one. Yeah. That, that one song had was a million different renditions. It was written like as far back as like when we uh, recorded our first album, mm-hmm. and then we just kept changing it, kept changing it. So that was on one of them it. songs that kind of like kept just, going. Yeah, you just kept. You said, I know there's something here. We just got to figure this out. Yep. Type thing. How many of those you guys got going on? Dude, there's there's always a few of those songs that are on the back burner. And you're always trying to. There's a whole like just thing in Sean's computer of just oh, riffs. Really? Yeah, just stuff that we're holding on to. Just maybe that'll fit one day. You never know. Yeah. Is that how you guys start a new album idea is to open that that thing up and f- if we it? really have nothing that will just maybe spark something out of that, yeah. But normally uh if a lot of newer ideas do come to us, but then then we're like, oh you know what we have an old riff that might actually fit with this song. Let's go back and see if we can find it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Even as uh, recent as Embrace the Unknown, we had two songs on there, uh, Hollowed and Last of Our Kind, that were completely different before. Mm -hmm. And completely different drum beats, completely different ways the riffs were played. And then Sean just went back in and completely rewrote them. And they're so much better the Mm -hmm. way they are on the album. No shit. Mm -hmm. And and any one of you guys can kind of do this, right? I mean, like, you all three kind of have, like, abilities to do that, like, to improve a song. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Does that? Yeah. Again, all, we don't, any, at any time, any one of you guys could come up and be like, and then you and like the other, it could be better. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. I just think that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we no just, ego. I mean, like zero, like void of the ego. Here. No, we've learned that. Yeah, we've seen plenty of bands and like other friends, like their bands stopped because somebody had an ego and wanted to carry on, or yeah, and j- it had to be like this, and you don't get a say, and it's like that doesn't make any sense. You're yeah. all making the music; you should all have a say. Yeah, people's uh, opinions not not meshing well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, in, in, like I, I guess there, in some ways, though, there are bands, though, that you have the main guy and he has his, his band around him. That's different. Right. Yeah. You know, then you have a guy who's, he's, he's the one, he's in control. You he's know? doing it all. It's yeah. his band. Mm-hmm. But that's not what, you know, you guys are, you guys have the collective team type thing where it's like. Yeah, we oh. talked right off the bat. There is no, like, main person in the band. We're all doing it together. So. We've always been collaborative, but uh, but a lot of it was just learning that over time too, you mm-hmm. know, because I would say early on there were certain moments in high school where it'd be like someone would get miffed a little bit if like their riff wasn't as good and we didn't go with it, but... But yeah, just over time, we just we lost the ego about it. It's, it's whatever. That's when we started talking to each other. Best. We're like, hey, if someone's got a problem with something, you should speak up. It's like, yeah. it, even if we butt heads on it, we should still talk about it. So oh, yeah. and try to try to make sure we're all happy with it, right? Because so. if you're not happy with it, then no one's gonna want to play it, and then there's no point in doing it. So, oh uh, yeah, <laughs> good. That's good advice, man. Yeah. That's the way to do it. That's why I think bands should all be to keep their bands together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and and you're writing the best music that your band can, can come come up with, right? I mean right. like you're you're, it's, yeah, you're not it's, limiting yourself. Three heads are better than one, really. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> All right guys, I want to thank you guys for coming down here, man. Thank this was you great, for having man. us. Yeah. But everyone's got to be keeping their eyes open for this EP that'll be coming out probably early fall. Yep. I'd late, say late so. End of summer, probably in there. Mm-hmm. You guys will be doing a release party. Yes. There'll be some singles being or sing, at least one single being released. Definitely off. one. Look yeah. for that. And you guys will be gigging. For oh, sure. Yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll Thanks. be all right. I appreciate you guys coming down again. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Keep your eyes open for Lower 13. And that's it for us. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> That'll be fine.